Welcome to Marina's Kitchen. Today I'm going to show you the new version of making crostoli. Uh, four years ago I put crostoli on my video and uh, it's an Italian dish, uh, these crostolis. Now when we originally used to make them, my mother's recipe was that we'd put uh, wine or brandy or some uh, grappa. It was something that they thought that that spirit would make the bubbles in the pastry and it used to form a bubble in the pastry. Now, after all these years, we've uh, there's, there's been a new recipe that's come out that we don't need the wine uh, and brandy and all, any wine spirits. So uh, I'm gonna show you the new version of crostoli. So what we need is uh, three eggs. I've beaten up three eggs in there. And what we need is uh, three dessert spoons of caster sugar put in there. And then we need three dessert spoons of warm water to go in there. So we just mix that all together and all we need is that and we need some vanilla and then I'm going to add three cups of plain flour to that and that's all the recipe it is. Very simple. Now I want to, when I make this pastry, I like to rest it for about half an hour to three quarters of an hour, whenever you're ready to do it again. Just wrap it up in some cling wrap, leave it there and then just get ready for it to do it. Now I'm just going to add this plain flour. Three, there's three cups of plain flour there. Just add a bit at a time and form a pastry. That's all there is to do. And uh, without that wine, it's so easy because you don't have to have wine or any spirit to make this. It's a new, a new recipe and it's just as good. So I'm going to show you how to do it. Now just keep on doing that until you get a sort of, it's a nice soft pastry. It's not very firm. And uh, I let it rest, and I've gone ahead and let it rest, and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to cut them. What happened was I went to uh, use my my cutter, pastry cutter, and uh, the thing, the handle come off. So what I had to do, I had to use it without the handle. So there you are. That's what's happened today. I'll have to get a new pastry cutter. Now I just put that three cups of plain flour in there. And that will form a lovely pastry, a lovely nice soft pastry. And I've wrapped it up, when I've, I've wrapped it up in the cling wrap, let it rest for about half an hour or two, three quarters of an hour, whenever you're ready to do them. So that's all it needs. Now just knead that with your hand, knead it nicely, wrap it up in some plastic wrap and then it will be ready when you need it. So what I'm going to go now, I'm going to show you the one that I made and I'm going to go ahead and shape it for you. So. What we do now is I've cut it up in pieces like that, put a bit of flour, I put a cloth on my bench and sprinkle some flour on it. I like to work with a bit of flour on it. And then I cut little pieces like that in the pastry. This is how I first do it. And I put a little bit of flour on the table on the cloth and just spread that like that. What I've done is you have to go on your largest setting of your pasta machine and then we go medium and then we go small. So just keep on doing the same thing like that. There you go. So now I've got it on my larger setting on my machine. I'm going to put it through. And what I do is I double it up and put it through again. You can do it about three times. Just keep on doubling up. And then just put it there with a little bit of flour that you've put on your cloth. And just keep on doing the same thing with all the other pieces. I, I like to do all my pieces at once and then I'm just going to go and deep fry them. I deep fry them in a, in a vegetable oil and I've got in my frying pan there, I've got about, I've got about a litre and a half of vegetable oil. So see, there you go. I'm just going to do that on the large setting of my pasta machine. Just go about three times. And then I'll go in the middle of the pasta machine. Another one there. That you keep on doing that all the time to all the pieces. Now we'll go into the middle of it, about there, and we now we'll go through it again. And keep on putting a little bit of flour on your cloth so it'll be just won't stick. Do it again. They're not hard to make, it's a little bit of a, 
trouble to make them, but look, they're worth it in the end to make it. It is really, really lovely. And, and I thought, when I got this new version of it, I thought, I must show you, because I did that other version, oh, I think about four years ago on my video. So I'm just going to show you this new version now of this. Now, I'm going to go into my end of, uh, like, about the second last of my pasta machine there. And that's the nice thickness that I want. And it comes really nice and thin. Just keep on pulling it out like that. And that's how thin it comes. Look. And just put it on your board and keep on doing with the other pieces. It comes lovely and thin. You can see through it. I'll keep on doing these. I've got already some made up for to deep fry. Now, after I've done all that, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to cut them in pieces. Now, I, I what I did now, you see I broke my, my pastry cutter, so now I've got to use it like this. It's a little bit of a different bit, but it's still working anyway. I have to use it now. I'll have to buy a new one. So all I do is cut them like that and put a hole in the middle like that and get them ready to deep fry. That's all you do. Put a, middle, put a hole in the middle of that, like that. And you've got that lovely edging of your pastry uh, a cutter on the edge. I like to have that edge. You like to have, you've got to have a pastry cutter with that nice uh, large edge onto it. And just keep on doing the same thing. Oh, I have to go and get a new one of these. I don't know how. I'll have to go and find one. Now, just keep on doing the same thing very quickly, very easy. There you go. Look. Now, once you've done all those, <coughs> excuse me, once you've done all, all those, all you've got to do is now uh, heat your pan up and deep fry them, which I have done a couple of trays. I have done a couple of trays of them. Look. That's how they are. I'm going to heat, the, heat my pan up now. And I'm going to uh, put them on a, if you, once you've deep fried them, I'm going to put them on a, a baking paper, a baking paper. And then I'm going to sprinkle them with some icing sugar. So what, as this hot, gets nice and hot, we're going to start putting them in. And then you turn them over and when they get brown, nice and brown, you just have to take them out. I've got a tray here with some baking, with some, uh, uh, my uh, paper towels, I'm trying to think of the name. And so now what I'm going to do is, I think that's hot enough. You just have to put one in and see if it's hot enough. It's frizzing out now. Just keep on putting, I can put the whole tray of that in the, in my, uh, pan here and you can see them frying up. You need that nice nice and hot. When they get brown you have to turn them over. I can put all this tray in here in the fry pan. If you make a quite if you haven't got a fry pan you'll have to have it like a sort of a deep fryer, a saucepan with some oil in it. Uh, and all you do look you can use this vegetable oil again. Just put it in a container and you can use it again. So you can see them bubbling around and you see them that they sort of getting nice and brown. As soon as they get brown I'm going to turn them over and I'm going to do some more. They don't take long. It really doesn't take long to do them. Once you've rested that pastry and you put it through, it really is pretty quick. Now they're starting to get brown and as soon as they get brown I'm going to turn them over. And they've got, they've still got all the nice bubbly on, on the pastry without the, without the wine. We don't need the wine on this recipe. I'm just waiting for them to get brown. And then when, when, they, uh, when I take them out, after they've cooled down, you sprinkle them with some nice icing sugar. They won't take long. And I'll do another batch. 
Look, they are nice to make. They, they look, once you put them in a container, they keep for weeks. So, and the kids, my kids just love chewing these and they just pick at them all the time. They are lovely. They don't take long to make. They're just getting brown now. And as soon as they start getting a nice brown colour on them, I'll take them out. As I said, you can use this vegetable oil again, put it, when it cools down, put it in a container and you can use it again. Honestly, you can use it for about two or three times, it's perfect, so uh, don't, no worry about wasting it. Like there's about a litre and a half in there, which has to give it a little bit to, to nicely uh, get the depth to fry all these frostlies up. And they are just about done now. I'm just going to put them on, this, uh, on my paper towels. There you go. And just a light brown. Beautiful. They don't take long to cook. They brown up nice, especially if you've got your oil pretty nice and, and hot. They don't take long at all. So I'll put another batch in. And then when they cool down, I'm going to sprinkle them with some nice icing sugar. I'll put another lot in. This second lot won't take long because the first lot, I think the oil, the oil might have been a little bit cooling down. But look, they are coming up beautiful. They don't take long to cook. Once you've cut them, I, what I do is, you see, I like cutting them all out and then I've got, ready, I've got them ready all just to go and, and deep fry them. Lovely. Look, and they've got the nice bubbles on them. And this is a new recipe of crostily where you don't have to worry about the wine and the spirit as our, my mother used to do. So this is the new recipe and my old recipe I did in my, on my video about four years ago. I put the wine in it and now we've come across this new recipe which we don't need the wine. So, uh, and, I, and I look, try it, it's wonderful. There you go. Look. That came quicker because the, the oil was hot at this time. And now once I've got them all there like that, I'm just going to spread them all out and I'm going to sprinkle them all with some nice icing sugar. And they look beautiful. I have another lot here. And I'll switch this off for now. And then I'm going to continue doing mine. Uh, look, you know, my children just love them. Uh, I have a large family, so nothing goes to waste. I'm always cooking for them and they love it. They love crunching on these, sitting in front of TV. Instead of chips, they can have a few of these. They're not very sweet or anything like that. There's nothing in them that... Now look, they are absolutely beautiful. The recipe is so simple, so easy. Now I'm going to let them cool down and I've got my icing sugar ready and I'm going to sprinkle them with some nice icing sugar. Just put them there like that. And that's, look at that, how bubbly that come. Look, beautiful. So I'm just going to, now what you do is just sprinkle them with icing sugar. Turn them around. Just turn them around. I like to uh, lay them all on my cloth and do this, but I'm just showing you what to do. I just spread them out on a cloth and I sprinkle them with icing sugar. Look, I just sprinkle them all like that. And honestly, they are beautiful. So look, I made these before and they are just as nice. Look, you get quite a few, you get two nice big full containers, two nice big round containers of these. As I said, they keep for weeks uh, and they're always lovely and fresh. Now just keep on sprinkling if there's ice and sugar on them. Look, they're beautiful. Try them. They've still got bubbly on them. The same thing as we used to do with the, the wine and all the, the spirits on them. They still come nice and bubbly. Look, they're beautiful. So give it a go, this new recipe of Crossley. So I hope you're going to try them and enjoy them. Thank you for watching. I'm going to go and get a new pastry cutter. If that broke and I'll have to get a new one. Okay, thank you. Bye.